Hey there, it's Tom Corsonals, number one best-selling author of the Kindle Publishing Bible series and founder of TCK Publishing. In this video, I'm going to show you how to format your ebook for Kindle using Microsoft Word for Mac. So if you've got a Macintosh and you're using Microsoft Word, this video is right here is going to show you how to format your ebook for Kindle. This process also works for Nookbooks and uh, Kobo and most of the other major ebook retailers as well. You can do it all with Microsoft Word now. Uh, you know, stuff like iBooks you still can't do with Microsoft Word, um, but most everything else you can do, and Kindle's the big one. So right now in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do it. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do when you've opened up your file inside of Microsoft Word is you need to choose your style set. So your style set is what tells um, Microsoft Word, you know, what kind of fonts to use for your plain text, um, for your headings and so forth. So to choose your styles, just hit this button right here. It says change quick style setting. And what I always recommend is go ahead and just hit simple style set. So the simple, simple style set is everything you need, the font sizing, the spacing, everything is just right for Kindle. Uh, you can change it and tweak it if you want to, but I really don't recommend that you do. Just use the simple style set and make a few tweaks that I'll show you in this video as needed. Okay, so first thing you're gonna do is go ahead and choose a simple style set. Once you've done that, then you're basically just going through and formatting the book. So I'm just gonna assume that your book is totally written right now and totally done, and I'm gonna walk you through the process of how you would actually format it. So the first thing you wanna do is your title page here. So you're gonna want your copyright notice, usually the title of your book, subtitle, and so forth. So what do you do? For the title, there's a title button right here, and you're gonna go ahead and hit title. So these are your different styles within your style set, right? So your title would be for, the, for this big one right here. Now the problem with that is that it's not centered, so what you wanna do is make it centered just so it looks nice. Then here for your name and subtitle, hit subtitle, and then um, again, you'll have to center it once you do that and center the subtitle. The rest of this text here is all gonna be centered. Um, and that's you know that's the front page. What you want to do now on every page where you want uh, the page to end, you're going to need to insert a page break. So you go up to top to insert and hit break and page break. That's how you're going to insert your page breaks here. Now you do not want to insert section breaks normally. Uh, I don't ever recommend a section break for uh, an ebook because it can kind of mess up certain things here and there. Um, you know, obviously if you're doing formatting for like a paperback book, you're going to want to use section breaks for different reasons. But in ebooks, I don't recommend using them at all. Just use page breaks. It makes it really easy and really simple. Okay, the next page, I have a disclaimer here and a page break again at the end. Now, all the plain text right here in your book is going to be normal. So all the text inside your chapter is going to be using this normal style set right here. So just hit normal on all your plain text. Your headings, um, if you don't want them to be in your table of contents, you're just gonna use heading two. So this is really a subheading be heading two. If you want the heading to appear in the table of contents, you're going to go ahead, go over the heading, hit heading one. When you do that, it will. Um, that's the stuff that will appear in the table of contents. And it doesn't have to, but that's the way I choose to do it. Okay. So then there's your table of contents. So what you're gonna wanna do, uh, it's a little bit more complicated uh, for Mac users than for PC users. And PC users, you can just go to table of contents and automatically insert it for you and it'll automatically hyper add the hyperlinks throughout your book. With a Mac, it doesn't have the option to add hyperlinks in your table of contents automatically, which is kind of a pain in the butt. So what you're gonna wanna do is go ahead and hit document elements and then go ahead and hit um, table of contents in here and you're going to head, want to choose your style so um, basically I would just go options here and I would just uh, delete this section right here it says show page numbers and only show level one so it's only going to show your heading ones and then go ahead and click OK once you've done that there you have your table of contents now notice you've got your table of contents there all the heading ones so throughout your whole document what you're going to do is you're going to go to all your chapter headings for example and you're gonna hit home right there and you're gonna hit heading one so that all of your chapter headings and everything you want to be in the table of contents will be in the table of contents. The problem here is that they're not linked. So what you need to do next is take is manually insert links to each of the sections in your book where you're gonna want um, the table of contents to click to. So for this section, uh, so let's go to foundation one. So that's basically like chapter one of the book. Go ahead and hit insert. At the bottom insert, hit hyperlink. And then hit uh, document here. So you're gonna add, add a hyperlink inside your document and then hit locate for the anchor. Then under here, hit headings. 
and then choose where you want it to be. So that's foundation one right there. Hit OK, and then OK, and then this, you'll have to hit Enter. And then this right here, once you click it, it'll take you right there where it needs to be inside the document. So you're gonna need to do that for every section of your table of contents. Uh, it's a little bit time consuming. Uh, if you've got a PC, it'll do this automatically for you, but with a Mac, it won't for some reason. So go ahead and make sure you do that. Again, I'll walk you through the process one more time just so you make sure you got it. Go to the table of contents, highlight the text you want, hit insert, hyperlink, hit document right here in the middle, hit locate, then hit headings for all your headings, then choose the heading you want to insert. So this one would be foundation two, then hit okay, and hit okay. And then right there, once you click it, it'll take you to that section of your book. Okay, that's how you do your table of contents. You're gonna do that with all of the listings in your table of contents to make sure it all works for you. Then again, when you're going through your book, basically what you're gonna be doing here is just take every major heading, highlight it, hit heading one, take all your main text, highlight it, hit normal text, and that's basically the gist of everything you're gonna do. You can insert page breaks, again, at the end of every chapter so that the next chapter starts on a new page. If there's any images you have or any different sections, subheadings that you want to appear on a new page, just insert a single page break, okay? One smart tip when you're formatting that you're going to use as well, this button right here at the top, right here, this button is called the show all non-printing characters button on a Mac, or what it's basically doing is it's showing all the pilcrows. So pilcrow is this little symbol right here, which signifies that there's been an enter mark or a return mark after that, right? So every time you hit enter, there's gonna be a pilcrow that shows up. That's the little symbol right there called a pilcrow. It's also gonna show you um, little spaces. So you will notice if you look really close, it's hard to tell on a Mac, but on a PC it's really obvious. Right there in between the, sex, the text, there's a little dot for every space. So if you add more spaces, notice there's more dots showing up there. So all those little dots. Um, so that button right there makes those dots appear. It makes all non-printing characters appear. So any spacing characters and stuff like that, they'll all appear once you hit that button. And that'll make it easier to notice, like for instance, if you've got extra spaces in your book, you want to delete all of those extra spaces because extra spaces just get in the way. They can distract readers. And once it's, and those, when those extra spaces are converted onto a Kindle reader or any ebook reader, uh, you might have really weird looking stuff. So you want to delete all extra spaces, absolutely all of them, just delete them. And then again, page breaks at the end of every section. So that's the gist of everything you need to do. Um, this would be for nonfiction. Now, if you want to do fiction, you're going to make one small change. And the change you're going to make, I'm going to show you how to make it right now. You're going to change the spacing of the text. So what you're going to do right here is select a main text in your, in your document, right-click that text, click on paragraph, and you're going to change the paragraph settings. So the first thing you're going to want to do is hit the special button right here. Go to first line. So hit special first line, and you're going to add spacing to the first line because that's how it's done in fiction. So you're gonna add a spacing of 0.38 inches to the first line of all your paragraphs. Then you're going to remove the spacing after paragraphs. So in fiction, there isn't any spacing after paragraphs. So again, you're gonna add first line, 0.38 inches right there, and then remove all spacing. So zero point spacing after all your paragraphs. Then hit okay. Once you've done that, the text should still be highlighted. You're gonna go up here to your normal font. You're gonna right click it and click update to match selection. What that's going to do is going to change your entire document so that all your normal font in this document now follows that new format. So every time you hit normal from now on, that normal style set has now been changed to have this fiction formatting. So see how the paragraphs are indented, there's no spacing after. That's the layout you're going to want for fiction. Now the issue or the challenge you're going to have when you do this is it's going to change the layout for all your headings as well. So what you're going to want to do once you do that is change the heading spacing. So go to your heading one spacing, right click that text, hit paragraph, and then remove this. So you're not gonna want the for first line to be special formatted. You can change the spacing before and after as you see fit. I wouldn't do anything more than 24 point, any, I would not do anything more than 24 point before or after. That would be the maximum I would recommend. If you wanna change the alignment from left to centered, you can do that. Once you've done that, again, right click, update to match selection. Now all of your heading ones will be centered they won't have the indentation there. 
and they'll have the spacing that you had selected for the paragraphs. So that's the only change you would want for fiction. Again, this book is nonfiction, so I'm gonna undo all those changes because that's just not how fiction, or that's not how nonfiction should be formatted. Um, but that's the only difference you would use if you're formatting fiction. Okay, that's basically all there is to it, um, to formatting uh, an ebook for Kindle. Um, if you want images, what you're going to do is go ahead, create a space for your image. So you're gonna wanna make sure there's a pilcrow here when you insert your image, just so that it's laid out properly. So make sure there's a pilcrow there, there's space to insert your image. Select this space right there, we can insert your image, and then go up to the top, hit insert, and then hit photo, and then hit picture from file. Then you can upload the file directly into Word. So I'll just do a test one for you right here. We will take this picture of me reading a book from several years ago, and it's inserted right there. Now you do not need to do any formatting once the image is inserted. So you don't need to you know, change the spacing of it. Um, you don't need to add extra enter symbols afterwards. You wouldn't wanna do any of that because that will mess up how it's going to look on an e-reader. One thing you can do uh, is you can, do, you can reduce the size of your image. So if you don't want your image to show up really big, uh, you can reduce the size of the image. You can just drag it to reduce the size. It'll be a smaller image. Just, I wouldn't do it this small because on an e-reader, that's gonna end up being too small to even look at. So I wouldn't normally suggest that you even reduce the uh, sizing of it. If the image that you insert is too big, Kindle will automatically uh, sh you know, reduce that size to the maximum size of an image and it'll look good on all the e-readers. So I wouldn't worry about that. So that's really the gist of everything you need to know to format your ebook for Kindle using uh, Microsoft Word for Mac. All right, I hope this video has been helpful. I'm wishing you an incredible day. Take care.